Hello all my truth seekers, welcome to the truth show. This truth seeker requested video, I will finally break down the true race of Cleopatra. Yes. This is a trigger warning in this video I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Cleopatra the Seventh, Thea Philopatry, aka Cleopatra, who's Greek and famous, was born between 70th to 69 BC died on August 30th BC. The Egyptian queen is famous in history and drama as Julius Caesar's lover and later as Mark Anthony's wife. She became queen on the death of her father, Ptolemy twelve, in 51 BC and ruled successfully with her two brothers, Ptolemy the 13th between 51 to 47 BC and Ptolemy the 14th between 47 to 44 BC and her son, Ptolemy 15th Caesar between 44 to 30th BC after the Roman armies Octavian the future Emperor Augustus defended their combined forces Anthony and Cleopatra committed suicide and Egypt fell under a modern-day Roman domination oh yes now that we got that out of the way let's move forward let's talk about the actual race of Cleopatra which many believe is white or the modern-day Greeks but this is contradicted because of where Cleopatra was born. But that would mean that during Cleopatra's reign, in the whole of Africa, there was a little village or area filled with pale, tan, long, wavy hair people who could sustain the sun and wore braids, beads, and so on. However, we all know that Africa was filled with tan skin, brown skin, and dark skin people. All are of the same race, but have different religions and tribes. So why is the Queen Cleopatra, hence the name, and the white community trying to hold on to this lie? Is it far profound? And does Alexander the Great have something to do with this mystery? I have realized that blacks and natives have a history, but what about Latinos? Why is their history erased? And why do I have a gut feeling that their erase began with the death of Cleopatra? But why? So what do we know about Cleopatra ancestry? Well, before I get deep into that, here is a generalized argument about Cleopatra. The Ptolemy dynasty of which Cleopatra was the last ruler was descended from a Greek Macedonian named Ptolemy Sauter. The first Ptolemy was established as ruler of Egypt by Alexander the Great's conquest of Egypt in 305 BCE. In other words, the Ptolemies were imperialists, outsiders, Greeks who ruled over native Egyptians. Many of the Ptolemy ruling family marriages were incestuous with brothers marrying sisters. Still not all the children in the Ptolemy line and who are ancestors of Cleopatra the VII are known to have had both father and mother who were Ptolemies. Here is the critical evidence in this argument. They say they are not sure of the heritage of Cleopatra's mother or her paternal grandmother. Historical records are not conclusive, they say, of what their ancestry is or what land they came from. That leaves 50% to 75% Cleopatra ancestry and genetic heritage unknown and ripe for speculation, or does it? Alexander the Great, True Ethnicity. Okay, this research blew my mind and made me realize that the whitewashing of our history goes deep. You see, Alexander was described as having ruddy skin on his breast and his face. The color of ruddy originally meant dark brown and slightly reddish complexion. But later, 
after the 1500s, Ruddy was intended to be white with blonde hair. When all of his drawings and carvings and sketches are him with dark hair, like the aboriginals who are, who were, and still dominate South Africa, AKA North Cape. But let's go back in time. You see, for thousands of years in India, many historians, such as Professor Lynn Thorndike, described the ancient people of India as short black men with Negro noses. There is considerable agreement that the first settlers of India could be associated with little black people or Negritios. The aboriginal habitats of India belong to an ancient population, the jungle environment of the subcontinent, much like the modern-day pygmies of Africa and the Negritos of Southeast Asia. We can only presume that the morphological features shared by these last two geographically diverse populations, such as tiny stature, dark skin, woolly hair, scant body hair, and occasional stetophagia, must also have characterized the ancient Indian homunculi, aka little people. Oh yes. They were also very diverse, some nearly white, black, or brown skinned. In other words, these little black people had a rich dynamic culture. They stuck around as a distinct population long enough for the ancient Greeks. So these records are full of references, you see, to little black people. And for more reasons, European and Chinese accounts to cite a Negrito besides presence in Indian forests. Yeah, so little black negroes just to sum it up is all in the chinese records and records all over the world okay according to george Reber, at least eight dbp populations still live in india these were all people of black people yes black people in india before the javidians came in in the negro in the new world sir harry hamilton johnson writes there can be little doubt that the pre-Dravidians tribes of the Negri Hills, Dakota, Karumba, Irula, and Vagda, and of the four southwest of Madras and Mysore, Cochin, and Travancore, Decatur, Penian, Pulula, Palaya, Pulia, and Kenyan have a prepondering element of Negro blood. Many of these people are dark colored with kinky or curly hair. Prognathus and flat noses with thick averted lips. Oh, and here's more proof. The headdress of the Moors has been part of history and now for thousands of years before they were called Canaanites. Also black and ruled the Middle East of thousands of years. Yes, that includes Egypt. And again, check out the headdress despite the rumors of them being white. There is so much evidence that proves the Canaanites were black. So what does this mean? It means that Alexander the Great was part of South Africa in India, the tribe called Karumbar, are descendants of the Gideon's Dravidian people that once reigned across all of India. They now live primarily in South India, mm -hmm, where they heard cattle, but remnants of their original populations are also seen in other areas. When you look at the above examples, know the diversity innate within this population, Looking at the people like the Karumba, it, it, it is easy to see how all races could have come from one ancestral black population. But look at their hair. It's straight, curly, tight, curly, and long, wavy. But one thing they all have in common is that they were of ruddy complexion. Another description of African black people, almost like the description of Mark Anthony. At the same time, the ancient Latin people were once called black or native until 1500 when the Moors lost the battle in Spain and many natives, blacks, etc., were exiled and sold into slavery with anyone alike. The Latinos back then were called the Hulaca people. They had hair just like us, but most had curly hair kind of like now. It was told Julius Caesar was of this ancient race, hence the name Julius. This is why Mexicans were called Mexicans after settling in Mexico from Colombia, but originally from North Africa. Yes, North Africa, right around the Middle East. Oh, yes. That means some of our prominent top heroic figures, such as Julius Caesar and Mark Anthony, were of this 
Latin descent. They were too whitewashed, right along with the blacks. I mean, you all heard of Spain, correct? You know, where the Moors and Latinos root over? Is it coming together now? Heck, if you compare the Moors Crescent to the Spanish Crescent, they look alike. And of course, it got taken over by the Masons. Even the term, oh, and the Queens and, you know, Queen Elizabeth and so on and so forth with the plagiarism. Anyway, even the term Moor has been used to describe alternatively the reign of Muslims in Spain, Europeans of African descent, and others for centuries. Oh, I'm not done yet. Latinos play a part in this as well. The word Latin is derived from Morris, which is spelled M-A-U-R-U-S, originally used to describe Berbers and other people from the ancient Rome province of Mauritania, hence the Moor name in Mauritania, in what is now North Africa. Over time, it is increasingly applied to Muslims living in Europe, beginning in the Renaissance, yeah, hence Renaissance, Moor and the Black Amor mm -hmm, were also used to describe any person with dark skin, and that's a fact, look it up. Yes, they whitewashed everything. Oh, and if you didn't get it, the original Europeans and Greeks were black. And I've seen that most of you were confused of what I meant and had a hissy fit. You see, the original Greeks were, yes, mixed with various races such as African, Native, and Hispanic. Hence the curly hair and wavy hair and a few races that can withstand the sun without getting sunburned. Hence, without getting sunburned. You see, shortly after the death of Cleopatra and the death of Jesus and the rise of Christianity, it was during this time whereas the original race of Greeks and the Jews were plagiarized to what we see now in most characters in the Bible in Egypt, whitewashed and European, and so on. This is why most of your great-grandparents and so on who may have migrated from Africa who were the descendants of the African Jews and the true Israelites, they were treated badly once they got to America and the UK. It was also noted to be one of the reasons why Sick Hitler had them all killed. Now, please, my people whom I love, regardless of race, I suspect that you are not knowing this. And I mean, I just learned of this. So the shock would be hard to accept, but you just learned of many other history lies that's been whitewashed. Why not this? Until hundreds of years later, the ethnicity changed to all who look Caucasian, not white, they were called Caucasian, not white as pure as they call themselves now, but white from the Caucasus Mountains. They later change it to be related to pure as white as snow and all that stuff, innocence. But let's be honest here. Most of the white community, not all, has been anything but pure. I'm not racist, I'm just stating facts. Hence the white lie meaning to be an innocent lie. Uh-huh. Just as I thought there was so much anti-blackness that showed in the comment section, I mean, come on. Just do some research and take a look at history. We were part of a caste system for a really long time, so that's why there's still colorism. I mean, look at these images. People are talking about Latinos getting offended by being called Mexican. Well, this is the same thing. Why are you offended if I say that you possibly have African roots? I mean, just look at history. Let me uh, give you some examples. La Bamba. Well, the song La Bamba originated in Veracruz, which was originally sung by African slaves. Vicente Guerrero, which was our second president of Mexico. And guess what? He was African. So, um, still waiting on y'all racists who have this internalized oppression. I'm sorry to tell you, you also might be Asian. We are a diverse people. Mexico is a country, not a race. White culture, if you could even call it culture, is based in racism. It was a narrative created by colonizers, like my Portuguese ancestors, in order to justify what they were doing to other people on the continent of Africa and even here in North America. And the narrative was that we white people were better than all other races. And they did so through Christianity. Mm -hmm. They took the Bible and different scripture verses, twisted it around in order to fit the narrative of colonialism and white supremacy, and also the patriarchy. And the patriarchy is white man in power. White supremacy is white man in power. Colonialism is white man in power. And Christianity, for the most part nowadays, is white man in power. There are historical references and proof where the Catholic Church actually said to enslave an African was to save their soul. 
the kidnapped and enslaved Africans that were here in North America were preached different scripture verses than were actually in the Bible. And that's why they weren't allowed to read. Because if they could read, then they could see that these scripture verses were incorrect and they couldn't be controlled anymore by this white God. Yes. And white people, we didn't identify as white until colonialism. We identified as Portuguese or Latvian or German or Italian or French. Mm -hmm. But then colonialism came around and then all of a sudden we became white and we were superior because we were the chosen race by God and the scripture verses proved it and we had to go into other people's lands and preach the gospel when really it was all a no. ruse no. it was all an excuse to go in and rape and pillage the land and the people and the cultures so when I say that white culture is based in racism it is it's based in racism Christianity was the Trojan horse of white supremacy and colonialism. And Western Christianity, as we know today, is still based within superiority. Correct. All Christians think that they're better than everybody else. I grew up in it. I'm very familiar with the culture. Yes. And it's part of the problem. There's a reason why most of Trump supporters are oh, Christians. Jesus. Yep. It's because they don't even realize that the conditioning of colonialism and Christianity and the patriarchy is so deeply embedded within them and their identity that they don't even see the truth. Yep. Christianity is based in superiority, in white superiority, in white culture, which is all based in racism. Yep. So what does this mean? It means Cleopatra, who was predominantly raised in the Middle East, was of this descent. She wore the symbols of the Canaanites, whose name later changed to the Moors from Egypt. She was among goddess Isis, god Horus, and Osiris, all black, by the way, and whose bodies had never been found. Cleopatra's death was the start of the Caucasians from the Caucasus Mountains taking over Egypt and Africa, and shortly after, Christianity started to rise. The whitewashing began, and the rest is history. Oh, yes. And then you wonder why they hate Mexicans, Latinos, Latins, Blacks so freaking much. This is why. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post my videos. Love you all. See you all later. Bye.